we're in a, an interesting time period in history where we now have every conceivable type of food that has has been demonized somewhere by someone and this this the spectrum now spans from you know the the extremes of hardcore veganism to the extremes of people saying you should eat really only meat or only animal foods and that i mean people are literally making the argument some of these carnivore uh, diet advocates they're saying plants are trying to kill you because they're full of uh phytochemicals or which which are essentially a form of plant toxin and so they argue based on this sort of logic that if the plant evolved these chemicals in order to dissuade uh predators whether herbivores or insects from eating it or to make them feel unpleasant side effects if they consume too much of that plant therefore that chemical is toxic well, it's so utterly ridiculous to even have to, you know, we know that fight the American diet and modern the standard American diet leads to 40% of Americans dying of heart attacks and strokes, it's the leading cause of death in adults. We know that as people eat more vegetables, they have low, that lowers the risk of heart attacks and strokes, and as they eat more animal products, it increases the risk. I mean, this is stuff is well established, and, and I have 20,000 studies to demonstrate that. So these are, there's radical people in every field, as we talked about, unreasonable way of thinking. Let me, could you enable me to share my screen? Sure. And, I, and then I could show you some studies to review some studies quickly. Um, okay, you should be good to go now. Okay, yeah, that worked. Let's just take a look. Can you see that now? Yes. You can see that. Okay, so here's, Four studies, 2016, 2018, 2019, 2020, that just didn't look at people reducing meat. They looked at people, and these are studies that put together meta-analysis, different researchers around the world, put together um, looking at people's, not just reduction of meat, but actually what about when they ate more plants? What about when they ate more plant protein or high protein plant foods like beans and nuts and, and, and whole grains? And didn't just cut back on meat and eat more chicken, but actually ate more plants. So eat, look at the title of these studies, Associated with Animal and Plant Protein Intake with All-Cause and Cause-Specific Mortality. We're talking about 30% reductions of all-cause mortality. There's tremendous reduction of mortality when people increase more plants. Here's the other one, Patterns of Plant and Animal Protein Intake Strongly Associated with the Cardiovascular Mortality. So, uh, um, you know, another year, different researchers also publishing associated with animal and plant protein intake. Um, we're talking about all these studies show the same thing, dramatic enhancements in lifespan when people eat more vegetables and beans and nuts in their diet. And that, and we're talking about um, instead of eating animal products or just in a, even if you cut out processed foods and eat more plant protein. In other words, the, if, you know, if you cut out pasta and white bread and oil and eat more nuts and beans, and grain and whole grains and you know and green vegetables you get longer lifespan anything anytime you take any food out of the diet because the average american diet is 60 percent processed foods which is just empty calories and then 33 percent animal products which don't contain phytochemicals or antioxidants so these people saying well it's not good to consume phytochemicals or antioxidants in, in colorful plants well, the opposite is true. Phytochemical, our immune system and all nutritional and all, you know, legitimate scientists recognize that the, the intraepithelial lymphocytes that line the, the villi in the digestive tract and are, are the defenders of the gates of the castle build up with exposure to flavonoids and phytochemicals, particularly the aryl hydrocarbon receptor is dependent on green vegetables derived substances to have normal immune system. You know, so we can't even have a normal immune system to defend us against viruses and infections if we don't eat a lot of green, if we don't eat green vegetables. And all the studies demonstrate this. There's no, there's no studies that demonstrate better immune function or longer life with, with a carnivore diet. Show me one study that showed when people ate more meat and less vegetables, they live longer, or less beans, they live longer. No things, nothing exists in the world. And we have thousands of studies that show otherwise. And in my most recent book, Eat for Life, I have 2,000 medical references in there documenting that. And I've reviewed maybe 20, 30,000 to get those 2,000. But let's, we can go through a few more slides here. Let's look at here. Well, let, let me ask you this uh, before you go on. Um, two, two questions. Number one would be, there are anecdotes of, and, and this, is, this is really the reverse of the same question I asked Paul Saladino when I spoke to him. 
uh, which I would say was probably the most frustrating podcast I've I've ever done um, because it's just it's very difficult to to speak the, the same language and agree on the the terms of how we're going to play the game. Right. But uh, w- what I asked him was if if plants are so toxic and and full of these chemicals that are so damaging, how do you explain how not only so many studies can exist showing uh, just as long or longer lifespan or protection against various diseases or so many, uh, you know, obviously tens or hundreds of thousands of of anecdotes of people who have adopted vegan diets who have gotten healthier but what I'm seeing now is uh, uh, a trend where a lot of people, I think, have been swayed by, you know, um, some of the the pro meat arguments, and that includes not only the carnivore camp, which I consider the extreme of it, but um, you know, some of the more paleo type uh, diet uh, proponents who uh, are generally in favor of higher intake of, of animal protein. But so let me ask you the reverse of this. And admittedly, we don't have nearly anywhere close to any sort of comparable amount of evidence to show benefits from carnivore diets. But what we do have are several thousand testimonials that now exist of people saying that their health has been improved by a carnivore diet. So how how would you... Uh, sort of rebut that? How would you explain how that's possible? It's almost irrelevant because we're talking about soft endpoints versus hard endpoints. Let me explain that for a minute. I can take overweight people and put them on cigarettes, have them all start smoking cigarettes. And these overweight people will lose weight and their triglycerides will improve because the smoking will curtail their appetite. And they may even feel better or have better diabetic control because they're losing weight from smoking cigarettes. That's a soft endpoint. The soft endpoint means your triglycerides went down, you lost weight, you're not craving food as much, you know, craving overeating as much. There's some benefits to smoking cigarettes. But to know for sure if that's a safe way to lose weight, we have to follow groups of people for decades who smoke and then see what the hard endpoints show. Are they really living longer or is this a dangerous way to facilitate a, a soft endpoint? And with statin drugs, the same thing. We give people a statin drug to lower their cholesterol. Okay, their cholesterol is better, but that's a soft endpoint. How do we know that just lowering the cholesterol, the statin drug is actually going to make a person live longer? Maybe it's going to increase risk of more cancers than the number of heart attacks it prevents. And until we follow those people for decades, and we have to follow large numbers to see effects. We can't follow 100 people. We have to follow hundreds of thousands of people for, for probably more than 10 years, preferably 20 years, like two decades. So we have enough people dying and get the ages they died at. We have to have enough people that died using this program, enough people that died using that program to look at a hard endpoint. So a study has higher credence value. If let's list those three criteria for high credence. Number one, looking at hard endpoints like heart attack, cancer, age of death, cause of death. And, and then number two, we followed them for decades, not from six months to see benefits. And because it could be short-term benefits and soft endpoints. And number three, there was a large enough number of people to see a significant effect on the data. You have to have you know 5,000 deaths in there to see how long people live. This is gonna be a really accurate study. And then once we have a high credence study with 5,000 deaths, are there other researchers different parts of the world with another study that went for 25 years with hundreds of thousands of people showing the same corroborating evidence? Or is this a one out of a, or is this a, um, a, you know, a, a, something out of, you know, a, something of, a, a, you know, a needle in a haystack study where the other studies don't all agree with it. And all those things show consistency. It's not that one study contradicts another. All the well, the largest, most high credence studies all corroborate each other and show the same thing. And they also show a dose dependent relationship between animal product intake. In the long term studies, one study I'm referring to, I could bring that one up too, goes on for 25 years with more than 100,000 people and tr- giving people a zero to 20 score based on how much animal protein they're consuming. 20 would be like a carnivore diet, zero would be a vegan diet. And it showed as every as the animal product intake score went from one to two to three to four to five to fifteen to sixteen as it went up, heart attack deaths went up in a dose dependent manner. So was the study is, is the data all over the place, or is it dose dependent? Is it consistent with the, as you eat more, you see more disease, or is there some other confounding variables? 
So we're saying that the studies are done very well. They corroborate each other. They're good hard endpoints. And true, some people get short-term benefits from going on a, from cutting out all carbohydrates, getting better um, glucose control. Some people are, you know, gluten sensitive or have allergies and things to to certain components of beans that they better when they go, you know, they can, they might get some benefits from going, cutting out beans and grains from their diet, for example. So there are some people who could benefit from that, but you could do though, you can adjust the diet for people who have food sensitivities on a plant-based diet right. too. But the, but the problem is any of those benefits on a diet rich in animal products are going to result in shorter lifespan. And it's just, it's sad for the people adopting it and for the people promoting it. You know, because they're believing in something that's that's not going to be in their own best interest to eat that way. Um, and the probabilities are highly against them when we have so much um, corroborating evidence from thousands of studies showing otherwise. So okay. I think it's, um, you know, if you feel better eating a little bit of animal products, my suggestion would be you still should keep it a little better. You should still keep that to a very small amount and eat mostly natural natural whole plants to get the full levels of phytochemicals and antioxidants you are you need because you can't have normal immune function and protection against cancer or protection against the inflammatory effects of animal protein, which makes the body produce more, which makes the gut bacteria produce more pro-inflammatory compounds like TMAO, trimethylamine oxide. You raise IGF-1 to cancer promoting levels. You create certain um, other um oxidative damage to the body, which produces more reactive oxygen species in the body and advanced glycation end products, lipofusion and other ammonia and urea and other factors that age us. So it's just um, non, it's just almost to the point of being silly. And we have, it's, it's, a re, it's ridiculous viewpoints that are not supported by science, but you still have people doing all, having all types of belief systems.